Hello everyone, I'm glad that you're here. Today is a beautiful day in the Lord and I'm glad to welcome you into today's word. It's going to be one that I will say not many people talk about, but that's exactly why we're going to be talking about it today because it's not something that is touched on. And I'm just going to be upfront and tell you that today we're going to be dipping our toe into some pretty deep waters and this there may be a part two to this message there may be a part two and the reason why i say that is because when you dip your toe into deep waters especially when it relates to the word of god and what god wants to reveal to us when it comes to opening up the the pages of the bible it's not something that can be taught in just one message it's something that really we could never really begin to cover it in its entirety but what we're going to be talking about is the things with about the kingdom of God that the Lord does want us to know for our life here within the earth. Yeah, we're not of the world, but we are in the world. And so there are things that we need to know because we do exist here within the world. And those things are very specific things that pertain to the kingdom of God. And so we're going to be talking about that today. Now, these are things, this is why I say we're going to be dipping our toe into some deep waters today, because these are things that the word of God, specifically Jesus, refers to mysteries of the kingdom. He, there are even some times within scripture where he says secrets of the kingdom. And so that's letting us know right there that these are things that is veiled, right? It's veiled, meaning that it's not revealed to everyone, but it is revealed to very specific people. And that's you. That is you. That is me. That's all of his children, everyone who has eyes to see and ears to hear. And we're going to talk more about that in a moment. But I encourage you to get a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil if you are someone who takes notes, because you're going to want to take notes when it comes to the things that we're going to be talking about today. And I'm just going to let the Spirit of God have His way, as we always do. I'm going to completely move myself out the way. We're going to go into the Word of God to hear what God has to say. And I'm going to let the Spirit of God flow. So I want to say a prayer, and then I'm going to jump right into it. Lord, I thank you for sending your children to this message. I know that there are many people here, God, who they have come across me for the first time in their life. I ask that you will open their eyes, open their ears, so that they hear what the Spirit is saying today. Lord, I completely remove myself out the way, and I go low at your feet, Jesus. And I ask that you will show up mighty today and speak only what thus saith the Lord. I thank you, God, that you always come with an on-time word. I thank you, Lord, that the Spirit of God goes before you and leads us into all truth. Let that be the case today. There are people who are connected to this ministry and they know that you have sent them to hear and be seated underneath the anointing that is on this ministry. Lord, I ask that you will even for them pour out fresh oil today. For everyone here, pour out a fresh anointing on them, Lord, as you are a God who anoints our head with oil so that our cup overflows. Let it begin to happen even more for those who are here, those who have come across me for the first time, those who are who are attached to this ministry, let them know that you have heard their prayer. Let them know that you have searched the desires of their heart, the ones that are for this time, the ones that are for this season. And so that they know, God, that you not only hear their prayer, but that you are an answerer of prayers. And they know, Lord, that you not only search the desires of their heart, but you put them there, God. So I thank you, Lord, for always being on time, present, and always showing up with the answer, always pouring out revelation, always revealing your word to us, God. Let it be no different today as we all come before you and we're ready to receive. As we say, speak, God, because your servants are listening. We give you all the glory, God. We give you all the honor, the praise, and the name of Jesus. Amen. So today is going to be um, a very deep teaching. And I do want to let you know, as I said, that this may, there may be a part two to this because there's, you know, as I was writing out the notes to today's word and I was preparing them, um, I, I got to a moment when preparing these notes, when I realized there's no way, there's no way that I could cover everything that the Lord just downloaded into me on one message. And so I'm going to tell you right now, they're most likely, I'm pretty sure there will be a part two to this. So we're going to be sharing and going within the word of God to unpack 
the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom of God. The secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom of God. So we're going to be laying a foundation today. I have to say that laying a foundation. So it's very crucial that you get this in order to even begin to listen to a part two that there will be. So I want you to know, many of you know this, but we're going to be diving deep today. I'm going to be really unpeeling the layers. I want you to know that Jesus came so that our soul may be saved from eternal damnation. That is why we are all here and we have, you know, we have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and that is how we receive eternal life. But that's not it. He also came so that we may know the gospel, the full gospel. And we're going to be going into what that is. Because yes, we learn about the gospel when we sit under a pastor or we, we say the prayer of salvation. But we learn a very small piece of the gospel and we're going to be seeing what the Lord has to say about it. So when you know the full gospel, this is very crucial and I don't want you to miss this. When you know the full gospel, it's not just a prayer that you say, it is a way that you live. It is a way of life for you. The gospel, the message of the gospel, the message of the kingdom, it is a way of life for you. So it isn't just Jesus saves. It's not, which yes, Jesus does does save. He goes after the lost. He leaves the 99 for the one, but that's not just what the gospel is. Yes, that is a large part of the gospel, but Jesus says that he's the door. We're going to go into that. So it's not just Jesus saves. Jesus is the door. And I want you to really begin to envision something just like any door, you know, just like when you walk into the door at your home or when you walk into the door for a grocery store, whatever it may be, a place where you walk into the door of your church, just like any door, you enter it. And when you enter it, you immediately step over a threshold. There's a threshold at the bottom of every single door. It doesn't matter what door you're going into. There's a threshold that you have to step over to get into that place. So just like any door, you enter it. But then before you enter it, you have to step over that threshold. And then when you step over that threshold, you're immediately into a new place. You look around you and everything's new, right? It's not the same as when you were outside. When you're outside, there is concrete, there's grass, there's trees. It's nature, right? You could see the sky up ahead. But when you step over the threshold into a door, you're immediately into a new place. And in this place, you'll notice that, well, (laughs) number one, it's completely different. But you'll also notice that the atmosphere is different. The air is different. The rules are different right? The people are different. I'm going to give you an example. If I invited you into my home, you first have to stand before a door before I let you in. And then myself as the owner of my home, I'd have to open that door. I'd have to decide to open that door and let you in. And then when you come in, you first have to step over a threshold. I'm going to tell you what that word means because we're going to go deep today. In order for you to actually step in, you'd have to step over a threshold. And then once you enter in, you notice that there is a different flow in my home than there is outside, right? It's a different flow. The atmosphere is different. There's a certain fragrance in the atmosphere. The decor is different. Everything is different. I'm I'm really setting it up for you. We're laying a foundation here. So I want to take you to John chapter 10, verse 7 through 9. So you can go there. We'll be reading from the ESV. Uh, Before I start reading that, I want to share with you what the word threshold means so that you really begin to see and make the connection here. The word threshold means, and this is textbook definition, you can find it on Merriam-Webster. Threshold means a point of entry or a beginning. That's it. It simply means a point of entry or a beginning. So I want you to imagine stepping over a threshold to walk through a door and then refusing to go any further. Just imagine that. Imagine you going to someone's home, knocking on the door, going to your church, knocking on the door, going anywhere, knocking on the door. Someone opens the door and you step over that threshold, which is the point of entry, the beginning. And you enter into that new place. Atmosphere is different. Everything is different. But you refuse to go any further. You just kind of stand there. I'm really painting a, painting a picture, picture for you here. You f- refuse to go any further. You just kind of stand there. You're looking at all the decor. You're looking at everyone inside having a great time, <laughs> whether they have food out, they're feasting, they're singing, whatever. You're just observing everything, but you're refusing to go any further. You're just observing the beauty, the abundance of the place. 
not really partaking in anything, just looking, only your eyes looking, knowing you have access to it because you're there, you're inside, you've stepped over the threshold, you're, in, you're at that beginning point, but you're just observing, not partaking in all the things you have access to, just standing there. I want you to know, and this won't be you, but I want you to know that many people live their life like that, their whole lives like that. Going into a door, being at the beginning point of just having access to all that is ahead of them, but then not going any further. They just stay at that door. And so I want to decree and declare over you now that you will not live your life only observing the goodness of God, but that you will receive and experience the goodness of God in the name of Jesus. I want you to put that in the comments. I want you to speak out of your mouth and decree and declare that over yourself today. So keep in mind, keep that in mind as we go to uh, John 10, 7 through 9. Okay, so Jesus again said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers. That's, a, that's really deep when you begin to understand what he means by that. I'm going to go into it a little bit more. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and and anytime there's an and, that means there's something added on to it. And we'll go in and out and find pasture. Verse uh, 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that, there may, that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. So right off top at verse 7, Jesus is saying, Truly, I say to you, I'm the door of the sheep. But then he goes on to say, all who came before me, they're not the real deal. You know, I talked about authentic the authentication process. I'm, I'm actually teaching on that. I've taught on that. I believe it was a few weeks ago in Exodus, uh, the course Exodus. So Jesus is saying, listen, I'm the real deal. Yeah, there are people who came before me, but they, they're not the real deal. So he said, all who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. So let's back it up a bit and let's go to... We're still in John chapter 10, but let's look at verse 1. John chapter 10, verse 1. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. So I'm going to pause right there before we continue on. The reason why I wanted to share that part of John chapter 10 with you is because Jesus outlines to us in verse 8. He says, all who came before me are thieves and robbers. What does he mean by that? He means that there will be people, and it's still going on today, there will be people who know about the kingdom of God. There will be people who knows all that they have access to, but they don't go through Jesus. That means they know that they can get to a certain place within the earth. They know they can receive certain things within the earth. They know this, right? But they, instead of going through Jesus, they don't want to because they know that anytime you step into someone's home, anytime you step over a threshold and enter into a door, you're going to have to abide by the rules of that house. If you come into my house and you step over the threshold, I welcome you in. There's a certain flow. There's a certain atmosphere. There's a certain fragrance. There's a certain way that I like things in my home. And so you're going to have to abide by the things that I say because you're under my roof. It's the same way when you step over that threshold and enter into the kingdom of God. People don't want to do what's required to receive all that God has for them. As he says, John 10, 10, life more abundantly. They don't want to do that. So instead, according to John chapter 10, verse one, Jesus says they go in some other way, but they don't want to go through the door, but climb in some other way. And then he says, that man is a thief and a robber. That man is a thief and a robber. It, it makes Malachi 3, 10 or 3, 8 through 10 stand out in a whole new way when he says, you robbed me. And they say, how we rob you, God? By not paying your tithes. It, it really highlights it in a whole other way. And I'm not even teaching on the tithe right now, but I want you to begin to make the connection. He says, that man is a thief and a robber. Mm. I don't have time to go, go there now. Okay, so keep that in mind. So now that we know that Jesus is the door, I wanna share with you what happens when you step over that threshold and walk through the door, which is Jesus Christ. 
we're going to go into some pretty deep waters today. What happens is your worldview changes. The way that you see the world, it changes. You're wearing different glasses now. Your sight is different. And you don't just begin to experience life more abundantly as Jesus shares with us in John chapter 10, verse 10. It's bigger than that. It's, it's way bigger than that. It's way bigger than that. You experience the kingdom life. You experience a life of regality. You experience the life of someone who is a part of a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And so, no, it's not just you begin to experience life more abundantly. Your entire worldview changes. You experience the kingdom life. I want you to come with me to Luke chapter 8, verse 1. Luke chapter 8, verse 1. Soon after, he went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing, listen to this, the good news of the kingdom of God. I'm going to read that again because I, I don't I want to make sure that you caught that soon after he went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. And so that's the good news. What is the good news? The kingdom of God. Jesus is the door to the kingdom. The gospel is the good news of the kingdom. You can write that down. Jesus is the door to the kingdom. The gospel is the good news of the kingdom. When you're giving, when you're sharing a gospel of something, you're giving news. The gospel is the good news of the kingdom. So the more the church begins to teach on this accurately, the more believers will begin to truly step into all that God has prepared for them. And that's just how it is. But people don't, I have, you know, I'm, I'm going to say, I'll talk about that later. I'll talk about that later in this message. Don't worry. Okay. So I want you to know that God has things for you, things that's already prepared for you that you haven't even heard of yet. Your mind hasn't even thought of yet, but yet it exists and it's already been prepared for you. And I'm talking about no eye has seen, no ear has heard, but yet these things exist and they are already prepared for you. So when you come to the door, which is Jesus Christ, and then you step over that threshold into the kingdom, you begin to experience the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom of God. And it is incredibly beautiful. Let's go to Matthew 13. We're going to be very scripture heavy today. Matthew 13, 9 through 16. Now, I'm going to flip there in my ESV just so I have it open in case I want to go back and forth, but I'm going to be reading it from the Amplified Classic. <clears throat> Matthew 13, 9 through 16, and we're going to break it down. Okay, so at this point in the text, in Matthew 13, what's happening here to give you some backstory uh, or some background information is Jesus is talking to people as he always is. He's always talking to people from the moment he started his ministry up until it was time for him to go to the cross. He would be talking to people. He'd be healing people. And this was because they, he was constantly surrounded by people. And so he was talking to people. And then he goes and um, it says in chapter 13, verse 1, it says, Same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. And great, ca- great crowds gathered him about. And so he went into the boat, he sat down, and now he's talking. He's talking to the crowd that gathered him. And he's sharing with them the parable of the sower. And so as he's sharing with them the parable of the sower, he goes on to say, verse 9, He who has ears, let him hear. And so this is where we're going to start. He who has ears to hear, let him be listening, and let him consider and perceive and comprehend by hearing. Then the disciples came to him and said, why do you speak to them in parables? Because I want you to know Jesus always spoke in parables. He always spoke in parables and it was intentional. It was for a reason. But the disciples were like, Jesus, why do you always speak in parables? And he replied to them and he said, to you it has been given to know, and here it is, the secrets and mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it has not been given. And then he shares why. He says, for whoever has spiritual knowledge to him will more be given and he will be furnished richly so that he will have an abundance. Do you see how this aligns and it parallels with John 10, 10? You will have life of came that you have life more abundantly. I'm going to read that again. For whoever has spiritual knowledge, spiritual knowledge to him will more be given 
and he will be furnished richly so that he will have abundance. But from him who has not, has not what? For him who has not spiritual knowledge. And we're going to get into it. Even what he has will be taken away. I want you to pay attention to that scripture. I want you to pay attention to it because many ministers don't touch that scripture with a 10 foot pole because they don't want to tell people that if they don't have understanding of the word of God, that even what they have will begin to slip out of their fingers and then they'll be wondering why. And they're wondering why because they're, they're ignorant and they're in the dark. They're in the dark and ignorant because they're being taught improperly. It's unfortunate, but I can't allow the Lord to use me. I can't say, yes, Lord, put me on the front line. I'll teach your word and not teach it accurately. Because I want you to experience and have all that God has put you here to experience and have and do and be of service in the way that all that God has, has put you here to be of service and do. So he says, from him who has not spiritual knowledge, even what he has will be taken away. Let's go to verse 13. This is the reason that I speak to them in parables. So he's just saying bluntly, listen, I speak in parables because those who are meant to understand it, they'll understand. And those who are not meant to understand, they won't understand. And he's going to draw a line of distinction between those who are meant to and those who are not. And you'll see that it's fair and you'll see that it's just. He says, this is the reason that I speak to them in parables. Because having the power of seeing, they do not see. And having the power of hearing, they do not hear. Nor do they grasp and understand. So he's saying, this power, they, it's, it's freely given to them. They can tap into it. They can access the power of God and then use it to understand the mysteries and the secrets of God. They can tap into the power of God, the wisdom of God, and then use it to hear, right? They can open their ears and tune it in to hear and seek out. What does God mean by this? Help me, Spirit of God. Give me, give me wisdom, right? And he'll do it because he does so freely. But he says they have this power to hear, but they don't hear. They have this power to see, but they don't see. And he says, nor do they grasp and they don't even understand. And them not understanding is directly tied to them not hearing and seeing. When you hear and see things properly, you understand it properly. And when you understand something properly, then you can act in wisdom. So it's a progression. So verse 14, and them indeed is the process of fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, you shall indeed hear and hear, but never grasp and understand. And you shall indeed look and look, but never perceive. So this is something that was prophesied. That will be the case for many people. Verse 15, for this nation's heart has grown gross, fat and dull, and their ears heavy and difficult of hearing, and their eyes, they have tightly closed. They have tightly closed. Jesus didn't close them. They have tightly uh, closed their eyes. And there's a reason for that. The reason is because people simply don't like the truth. They don't like self-reflecting. They have, you know, pride within them and pride is a spirit, which I can't teach on right now because we don't have the time. They have pride within them and they themselves, for many different reasons, have shut their eyes. It says, and their eyes they have tightly closed, lest they see and perceive with their eyes and hear and comprehend the sense with their ears and grasp and understand with their heart and turn, I should heal them. This means that when they turn and repent, Jesus will heal them. He will heal, he will heal the things that have went on within their life that has caused them trauma. He will heal you know, things going on within every sector of their life. And so now we see and I'm just going to make a parallel and draw a line of comparison. Now we see why Solomon asks God for an understanding heart. It's so clear. Now we see why he said, Lord, because remember he was giving a thousand offerings on the mountain. And it, it sparked the attention of God where he visited him in a dream and said, what will you ask me, Solomon? Just ask it. Solomon said, I just want an understanding heart. Now we see why he asks for that. Because Solomon understood a mystery of the kingdom of God, that without the understanding of the things of God, it's simply the blind leading the blind. The blind leading the blind, and we have that a lot within the body of Christ. I just have to be real with you. The blind leading the blind. But Solomon, who was an incredible leader, very wise, the wisest man in, on the earth, especially at that time and ever, the one thing he asked for was an understanding heart. He understood a mystery, a secret of the kingdom of God. Let's keep going. Verse 16, but blessed, happy, and fortunate 
and envied are your eyes because they do see and your ears because they do hear. Okay, so I have to say something. I know, and this is for me personally, I can't speak for anyone else. This is for me personally and this ministry. I know that there are a certain group of people that I'll never be able to reach because they have shut their own eyes to the truth. But I'm gonna tell you that I'm not here for, here for them. I'm not here for them. I am here for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, and I know that's you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't have clicked on this message. You wouldn't be here tearing me for the Lord with me. You would not be here. You wouldn't be coming back, right? You wouldn't be going into your time of the Lord when these messages are long over and continually seeking out the Lord and what he has to say about the things in his word and about what's going on in your life specifically. So I'm only here for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. And do those people need prayer? The ones who don't? Absolutely. They do need prayer because Jesus said there will come a point where if they do turn, then he will heal them. He'll hear and he'll heal them. So do those people need prayer? Absolutely. As I said, they have, they have pride within them and pride is a spirit. So they need deliverance as well. They do need prayer. So pray for them. Absolutely. But I'm going to tell you, do not waste your time. And I know this is a word for somebody. Do not waste your, your time trying to convince them because it's the equivalent, and you can write this down, of throwing pearls to swine. It's the equivalent of throwing pearls to swine. And so you have to be willing to minister to the ones and pour into the ones who the Lord has sent to you. But those who clearly do not want to hear the truth, those who clearly do not want to receive what you're saying, they're not meant to at that time. Pray for them and release them, but do not waste your time. And I have to, I have to expand on this more. Do you know that the enemy will use that as a strategy against believers? He'll send someone into your life who he knows he has a foothold in their life and their eyes and their ears are shut. And then he'll cause you to continue pouring and pouring so that you're depleted and you can't pour into those who actually are your assignment because you're paying attention and pouring into someone who clearly is not willing to hear the, the truth. It is a strategy, strategy to distract you, deplete you, and drain you. So you have to pray for that, those people, pray for that person, whoever it may be, and release them to the Lord. God can reach them more than you can. You're not God. I have to say that. You're not God. So you don't want to throw your pearls or cast your pearls to swine. And that's something that I had to understand very early on because there are people who will email in or they'll come in the comments and clearly they're not receiving what's being taught. They don't want to go to the word because I quote directly word for word from scripture. They don't want to study it out. They don't want to seek the word, the, the word or the Lord in their own time. But it's trying to bait me into an argument with them. And this happens to many different people in many different ways, specifically for the, or especially and specifically for the children of God, because it's a strategy. It's a strategy. And when you see it, you stop playing the game. When you see it, you stop participating in the strategy and then pray for them and release them to the Lord. So now that you've stepped over the threshold, because you have, everyone's here, everyone who is here, you've given your life to the Lord. And we'll say a prayer of salvation towards the end if you want to recommit your yourself to the Lord in this walk, or if you haven't given your life to the Lord, we're, we're going to say a prayer at the end. But for the most part, everyone here, you're, you've stepped over that threshold. You've came to the door, which is Jesus, and you have stepped over that threshold. And so it's time for you, because you stepped over the sh threshold, to experience the kingdom. It's time for you to not just observe, to no longer say that it's for you, but to experience the goodness of God, to experience the kingdom of God. And so I want to share with you one of the most famous words that we all know uh, that Jesus said in John chapter 18, verse 36. Let's go there. This one's going to be from the ESV. We're laying a foundation here. John 18, 36. And I'm going to give you some backstory so you know what's happening in the text. You already go deeper into it. Okay, so what's happening here is Jesus is on trial. Jesus is on trial and he's presented before the Roman governor. And as he's presented before the Roman governor, 
he tells him the famous words that we all know and he says my kingdom is not of this world if it were of this world my servants would have been fighting that i might not be delivered over to the jews but my kingdom is not from this world so he's just flat out saying listen the reason why because we're going to go up a little bit more so you can understand and john chapter 18 verse 35 he says am i a jew your own nation and the the chief priests have delivered you over to me what have you done and so then jesus says in the famous words my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not of the world. So he's painting a picture to him to say, listen, my, my kingdom is otherworldly. I'm in the world. I'm not of the world. Just as he told us, it's not of this world. And so most believers are standing at the door of a kingdom that's otherworldly, <laughs> otherworldly. You've crossed the threshold, you've stepped over it, but you're just standing there. You're looking around. You're looking at other people who experience the goodness of God. You're looking at the beauty of all God has to offer you. You say, I received that for myself, God. You're, you're, you're looking, you're hearing the message of the kingdom, right? You're hearing it being ministered to you like you are today. You see how beautiful it is, right? You, you walked, you stepped into that lane of promise, but you're just looking around, right? And so many believers are just standing at the door of the kingdom and it is otherworldly. But Jesus is waiting for you to fully enter into it, to receive his blessings and to receive his promises for life more abundantly. That's what he told us in John 10, 10. And so I believe, I believe that this ministry, and I want you to stick close to this ministry. I believe this ministry is about to take a deep dive into deep waters of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. And we're going to break it down because it's time that the church begins to understand what the kingdom of God is so that they can experience, so that they can become someone who bridges the gap, so that they can become someone who calls down the things that are within the heavenlies into the earth. That is what you're sent to do. Do you know that about yourself? You're called to be a representative of Jesus Christ. You're called to be a kingdom ambassador here within the earth realm. And so as a kingdom ambassador, that means that you can call down things from the kingdom into the earth and then it begins to change your life and then it begins to change the lives of the, of the people who are attached to you it completely changes your world view i remember i said you have a different world view you see things differently so i'm going to this message isn't going to be a lengthy one but i'm going to close this out by taking you to hebrews chapter 12 because as i said we're just laying the foundation today Hebrews 12, 28 through 29. Okay. <clears throat> Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. So the kingdom that you stepped into when you gave your life to the Lord, because now you, your citizenship has changed, right? You, you are part of the family of Jesus Christ. You have, you have brothers and sisters within the Lord. You're part of a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Now you are part of the kingdom of God. It is a kingdom that is not only otherworldly, but it's a kingdom that cannot be shaken. It's very important for you to grasp, especially as we go into the mysteries of God, the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom of God and um, the later days to come. It's very important for you to know because when you understand that you, you are a part of a kingdom that cannot be shaken, it changes everything for you. You realize that although things are unstable here in the world, not the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of God, although things are shaky and unstable within the world economy, not, not the kingdom of God, not the kingdom economy, it can't be shaken. It is impossible. It cannot be shaken. Although things are unstable within wherever you are within your government system, not the kingdom of God. It cannot be shaken. We learn that from Hebrews 12 verse 28. And so I want to tell you something that the Lord spoke to me yesterday. And I was, as I was preparing the notes for today, um, I was getting ready to say, okay, well this, I need to cut it off here. But then the Lord said, no, you must tell them what I said to you yesterday. And so I want to share with you um, word for word what I heard God say, and you can write this down. So 
the Lord spoke to me yesterday and he said to tell them, I'm getting ready to put them in the game. I'm getting ready to put them in the game. And so I want you to say, and you can put it in the comments, but I actually want you to say it out loud. Say, put me in the game, coach. Put me in the game, coach. And so I'll leave you with this. I'm going to say a prayer, but I'll leave you with this. You will become somebody, and I encourage you to stick close to this ministry because we're going somewhere. You will become someone who no longer stands on the sidelines. That's not going to be your story anymore. You're not going to be someone who's standing on the sidelines and see everyone else getting blessed, see everyone else receiving what God has for them, see everyone else working and operating in and living in their God-given assignment and doing what it is God told them to do and receiving what it is that God has for them. You're not just going to be observing what everyone else is doing. You're no longer going to be someone who sits in church every Sunday or listens to messages like this and says, I receive God and never receive. That's not going to be you. You're no longer going to be just standing on the sidelines. You're not going to be that person who steps over the threshold, right? And you just stand at the door looking around at everything there. No, you're not just going to watch with your eyes. You will now begin to not only see, but experience the goodness of God, experience the blessing of God. So I want to say a prayer and I encourage you to come into agreement with me. Lord, I'm so thankful that you sent your children to this message. I'm so thankful that you have many things prepared for them that their eyes haven't seen God. I'm so thankful that you have sent them here to receive of the anointing, the fresh anointing that's being poured out on a consistent basis. I know that you have incredible things prepared for them. I know, Lord, that you want the best for them. I ask that you'll begin to open their eyes, open their ears, God, so that they can begin to see, so that they can begin to hear, so that they understand the knowledge of what it is that your word reveals to us, so that they get not just understanding, but that they increase into another level of wisdom, and they begin to act on the things of God. They begin to operate in and stand firmly in their role as a kingdom ambassador, as you have sent them into the world to bridge the gap. Reveal to them exactly what they are to do for your kingdom, Lord. Show them their role within the kingdom, God. Show them that they are the they are to bridge the gap, Lord, so that their family members may be saved, so that their family may receive the goodness of God, so that they may receive the goodness of God, so that they are to take back territory from the camp of the devil. Show them how they are to bridge the gap and stand in the gap, God. I thank you, Lord, that you have already done so many incredible things for us things that many of us don't even remember lord but begin to bring it to remembrance to them god all the things that you have done for them so that they know if you did it before you do it again begin to put in them lord an understanding that if you did it for somebody else you could do it for them so that as they stand at the at the door as they stand over the threshold and they start observing god all the things you're doing for other people they know if he did it for them he could do it for me i thank you lord for opening up their mind and their heart so that they can receive i thank you god for revealing to us the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom of god and we give you all the glory we give you all the honor and the praise in the name of jesus amen so I want to say a prayer briefly for those of you who um, are wanting to recommit yourself to your relationship with the Lord and your walk with the Lord. And those of you who haven't yet said the prayer of salvation, and for those of you who have already, I want you to stick around because I have some very, um, very good news to share with you in a moment. So those of you who that pertains to, who have not given your life to the Lord, or you want to recommit yourself to this walk with with Jesus, I want you to just repeat after me. God, I'm so grateful that you have reconciled me back to you. God, I'm so thankful that you have made it for me to be forgiven. I ask, Lord, that you will come into my heart. I ask, Lord, that you will make me over, make me a completely new creation and you, Jesus. Transform me by the renewing of my mind. Help me, Lord, so that I don't just stand over the threshold at the door, but that I receive all that you have for me in this life. I thank you, God, for life eternal. I thank you, Lord, for saving me from, et from eternal damnation. I want to live for you, Jesus. I want to live for you and for you only. I thank you, God, that I've been made new. In the name of Jesus, amen. And so I'm going to tell you that all of the hosts of heaven are jumping for joy, jumping for joy right now. Jumping for joy right now because hell lost another one. 
And for those of you who are recommitting yourself to this walk with the Lord, I know that the host of heaven, are, they're still jumping for joy for you as well because Jesus will always leave the 99 for the one. He had done so many things that maybe you can't see to get you to this point in life to where now you've said that prayer. And so I know that not only is the Lord happy, but the host of heaven are happy as well. So I do want to share with you all, if you want further prayer, that option is available. You can go to the description and click on the contact link and it's going to take you to a page to where you can send in a prayer request, you can send in an inquiry or a testimony. And I don't want to forget to say this. Y'all, I would say within the past week or so, especially those three days of prayer and fasting, you know, I believe the Lord, if you haven't seen it already and you joined us in those three days of prayer and fasting, the Lord is moving on your behalf. I want you to know that the Lord is moving on your behalf, even if you can't see it. Know that it's already in the works. It's only a matter of time before you see God show up for you with an answer prayer, with a breakthrough, with confirmation. The Lord is working on your behalf. But I do want to say that we received, I would even say record, <laughs> record number. We received record number, to, record number of testimonies during those three days of prayer and fasting. And my album, I have an entire album of the testimonies that come through this ministry. It's just, it just got longer. It just got longer. And so I was reading them with my husband and we were just celebrating with you all because um, one of the things that I've noticed as a theme is that many, many of you all are receiving your gold keys. And so I'm so glad, you know, for the goodness of God that you're experiencing in your life. And this is why I say that for those of you who aren't experiencing the goodness of God, that ends for you today. That ends for you today. As you stick close to this ministry, not only is your faith going to increase, but you will notice that the power of God will begin to increase within you and in your life because your faith has increased it. And so if, as you stick close to this ministry, your faith will increase. And as your faith increases, you'll be able to grasp holds of more miracles of God. I just did a, a teaching on that, on the miracles of God, and it was incredibly powerful. I encourage you to go back and listen to that if you haven't already. So I do want to say for those of you who are... Um, I have two things I want to say. What should I say first? Okay, I'll talk about the Marriage Prep Masterclass. So there's a mar Marriage Prep Masterclass that we will be doing on Facebook Live. It'll be in an informal setting, but it will be done in excellence because we always do things in excellence here. And it will be tomorrow, uh, Tuesday. I think tomorrow is the 25th. Don't quote me on that. Uh, the 25th at 12 p.m. And for those who cannot make it to Facebook Live, don't worry. It's going to be left on Facebook, the replay, and then I'm also going to upload it here to YouTube. So with that being said, everyone should be able to catch the masterclass. It's going to be completely free. Anytime we do a masterclass, they're always going to be free. I believe that for those of you who the Lord is called to marriage, you know that this is your season for marriage. It's going to really bless you. And so I will encourage you to show up, catch the replay if you can't catch it live, that will be tomorrow. For everyone here who the Lord is speaking to about putting seed in the ground, I encourage you to just be obedient to whatever God tells you. I just sowed a seed yesterday. And here's the thing. Here's how God works with me. I'm, I'm not sure if this is the case with you, but this is how the Lord works with me. The Lord will begin to speak to me about sowing a seed. He'll tell me a specific number. He'll say, this is what he'll even tell me what I'm sowing for. And I say, yes, Lord, I'm going to obey. I'll tie my seed to that. And then sometimes, if I'm just being transparent with you, sometimes I begin to not argue, but just kind of say, Lord, I just sowed a seed. Or Lord, you know my situation. You know, we always have a saying, we're saying my situation, my situation. And then um, usually it's within the same day, the Lord will put it back on my heart. And so that's how I know I heard him correctly the first time. And so I want you to know, and this is with anything, not just with sowing, with anything. If the Lord speaks to you about something, and you start to wrestle with him, he has a way of sending a confirmation to you, bringing it back around again, telling you again to where you know, mm, you actually heard him correctly the first time. And so what I will say is, if the Lord is speaking to you about putting seed in the ground, 
obey. You want to obey because I'm going to tell you that there's a couple things that he's wanting to do. Number one, he's wanting to get a harvest back to you. And number two, he's wanting to make an impartation into you. And so when the Lord says, sow into that minister, when he says, sow into that ministry, whatever is on that house of the, the ministry or that church, whatever is on, whatever anointing is on that minister's life, whatever God is doing in that minister's life, he wants to do the same thing for you. He wants to make an impartation. And so when the Lord speaks to you about putting seed in the ground, sowing into a minister, sowing into a ministry, there's a reason for that. He's trying to get something to you. And so I don't want you to miss that. I know that's going to really begin to click. A light bulb just went off for many of you. And when I caught that revelation, my entire life changed. My entire life, life changed. Because I'm a giver, I, when I learned you know, the concept of sowing, I was just sowing because I like to give. I was saying this, I can't um, sit under this ministry. I can't sit under this minister and not give anything because they just bless me that much. And so I was just sowing because I'm a giver and it would be little seeds here and there. Like it would be like $5 here. I'm just being real with you. $5 here, $25 there. It was very small seed, but I was just giving consistently like that because I'm, I'm, I'm a giver. But then when I realized, when I got into the word of God and I, I began to study 2 Corinthians 9, 6, where Paul says, those who sow bountifully will reap bountifully. Those who sow sparingly will reap sparingly. And then when I began to study Luke 6, 38, where the word of God says, as you give, it will be given to you with good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. And then the same measure you use will be measured back to you. What does that mean? That means that as you give bountifully, it will be given back to you bountifully. It'll come back multiplied, but it'll come back multiplied according to what you have sown. It's just how multiplication works. And we serve a multiplying God. And so I'm telling you that when I caught the revelation, aha, I get it now. I get it. That according to what I'm sowing, I'm going to reap that back multiplied. When I first started putting seed in the ground, I was just doing it because I'm a giver. But then when I caught that revelation, it changed my life. I'm talking about acceleration on a level that you can't even imagine, but that is Ephesians 3, it's Ephesians 3.20. And so the same will happen for you. The same will happen for you. So when the Lord tells you to put seed in the ground, just obey, just be obedient to whatever he tells you to do. And then it's only a matter of time before you will come forth as Psalm 126 says, with joy, you will come, for, you're, you will come forth with joy. I want to read that to you and then I'll let you go. I believe it's beginning to click for somebody. You know, there's a spirit of religion that will begin to rise up within people the moment you start talking about putting seed in the ground. And I'm going to tell you, it's put there so that you never fully step into all that God has for you concerning your finances. But I bind it in the name of Jesus and I send it into the abyss. Because you will live an abundant and prosperous life but it will take you stepping out on faith. Okay, Psalm 126. Let me go there. <clears throat> okay. Um, where do I want to start? I encourage you to read the entire chapter. It's a short chapter. But we'll start with uh, verse 4. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the Negev, those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. He who goes out weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. And so when you sow, and it's a genuine sacrifice, because it takes faith and faith pleases God, but it takes faith to sow a seed that's a genuine sacrifice. Meaning, you know, you may wrestle with yourself and say, Lord, this is a sacrifice for me. Exactly, exactly, that's the point. When you sow seed, that's a genuine sacrifice to the Lord. You go out weeping, bearing your seed to sow, but you will always come home with shouts of joy. You'll always reap a glorious harvest and you'll have shouts of joy. This directly aligns with, you know what, I'll leave it, I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. I believe that I've said all that God has given me to say. I want you to know that I'm praying for you all. I love you and I'll talk with you all in the next message.